Hi there everyone. Today we're going to be looking at how you can modify a frame design to tackle specific resonance issues that you might be having. This frame here is my GEP RC Mark IV HD7 that uh, I featured in my 5 inch versus 7 inch resonance comparison. If you haven't seen that, there's a link in the video description. This is the same quad that was in that video, but I've added two three millimeter carbon fiber stringers between the front and the rear arms. And today we're gonna to look at how changing the design of the frame in this way has affected its resonant performance. We're gonna be looking at some black box logs, and then we're gonna be looking at some simulation results. And we're gonna be uh, seeing what we can see and seeing whether this modification to the frame has really improved its performance or, or not. So uh, let's jump into it. Okay, so let's look at the black box log now. This is a spectrograph for the roll axis. It's a side-by-side -side comparison of two really similar flights. The first on the left is the GEP RC Mark IV HD7 without any carbon fiber stringers fitted. And on the right is exactly the same quad with the stringers fitted. And we can see immediately that there's quite a big difference between the spectrographs of these two flights. The first roll mode here at 92 hertz has increased in frequency slightly up to about 97 hertz. Um, and it could definitely be argued that on the second flight, the, the, the vibrations are less, the peak is smaller. If we look at the second roll mode, without the stringers that occurs at 130 hertz, and with the stringers fitted, it's increased in frequency to about 162 hertz, which is a pretty significant increase in percentage terms. Uh, it's also difficult to see, but the peak has gotten significantly smaller as well. If we look at the third roll mode at 330 hertz, this was a sort of broad, noisy mode before the stringers were fitted. And after the strings were fitted, you can see it's a much narrower, smaller peak. This 245 hertz resonant frequency here is actually uh, coupled in from the yaw axis. So we'll talk more about that when we discuss the yaw modes later on. So if we start now looking at the roll modes one by one, this is the first mode, so without the stringers, it's as you would expect, the, the motors moving alternately, um, exactly the same as what you would have seen before if you watched the previous video of five inch versus seven inch. If you compare that now to with the string as fitted, you can see the mode shape looks really similar, but there, there is a small amount of bending going on of the stringer, particularly where it's close to the motors at either end. And this additional um, bending that's going on, this extra carbon that has to be bent in order for the resonant mode to, to happen, is giving it a bit of extra stiffness. It's giving that mode a bit more stiffness. And that's leading to an increase in frequency up to 97 hertz, which, you know, it's only a few hertz, but every little bit really helps when you're looking to reduce the effect of uh, noise and vibration on the gyro. If we look now at the second roll mode, Without the stringers, as before, you can see there's a, a lot of, of movement of the, of the quad left to right here, which is why it's so pronounced on the roll axis. With the stringers fitted, we can see that the mode shape is, is pretty much identical. But again, if you look closely at the stringers, you can see that it's being bent by that mode. So that vibration is now having to bend extra carbon and whenever you have to bend more carbon, um, it's going to make the, the mode stiffer and that's going to push the frequency up. And you can see here, it's quite a significant increase of 32 Hertz, which will really, really help, allows you to move that uh, cutoff up, you know, an additional 30 Hertz, which is really gonna reduce your phase delay, improve your prop wash handling, all of these good things. If we look now at the third roll mode, we can see that without the stringers, the motors are moving close to each other and then further away again. Now, when we fit the stringers to this mode, 
those motors are much, much less able to move closer and further apart from each other because there's a, a carbon stringer in the way that doesn't want to be stretched or compressed. And as a result, you can see the mode shape here really significantly changes. Rather than the motors swinging back and forward, they rotate around the arms and the arms barely move at all. And the stringers, again, there's some bending going on here. But this really increases the stiffness of this mode and pushes the frequency up. It also makes the mode shape a lot less uh, pronounced on the roll axis. So you can see before we had the battery rocking left to right and there's quite a lot of movement there. But after we fitted the stringers, the battery is moving much less. There's a lot less rolling of the body of the quad left to right. And so that is responsible for the much, much smaller peak that we see in that roll three mode in the spectrograph on the roll axis. So the stringers here have made a real improvement to the resonant performance of the frame design. If we look now at the spectrograph for the pitch axis, we can see here on the left before the stringers, we had several resonant modes, one at 115 hertz, one at 145 hertz, and another one at about 300 hertz. We can see after the stringers have been fitted that we still have uh, a peak at 115 hertz, although it's much smaller. And we have a peak, second peak, has been shifted in frequency from 145 hertz up to 176 hertz. So another big benefit there. And then when we look up at the 300 hertz peak, we can't even really see that anymore. It's been really, really heavily uh, attenuated, shifted in frequency perhaps, made a lot smaller by the addition of those stringers. So let's go and look in at the mode shapes and see if we can figure out exactly how and why that happened. So first off, let's look at this 115 hertz vibration. And as we spoke about last time, it's my belief that the, this vibration couples into pitch due to um, an interaction between these motors moving up and down and the aerodynamics in forward flight when the quad is pitched forward. So as those motors vibrate up and down, um, you see a change in, in the thrust from the, from the motor as a result and therefore you get a bit of coupling onto the pitch axis. With the stringers, you can see that there's really not very much going on. The stringers aren't really bending that much. Um, they aren't really interacting with this mode very much at all. So the only thing that we can, we can sort of attribute to the stringers here is that they may be adding a little bit of damping by the fact that you've got extra joints in here, extra screw joints. And that extra damping might be reducing the amplitude of that mode a little bit so you see it less in the spectrograph. Now I'm going to be talking in a lot more detail about damping in a, a subsequent video and we're going to be looking at how damping is a critical factor that makes the Impulse RC Apex such a high performing frame. So you really don't want to miss that video so make sure you're subscribed make sure that you watch that one when it's uh, when it comes out when it's ready if we look now at the second pitch mode we can see that without the stringers it's quite uh, you know quite typical we've just got the the quad pitching back and forth as the front motors move up and down and the rear ones move up and down uh, in counterpoint to that when we add in the stringers though um, something quite interesting happens you can see that there's quite a lot of bending of the stringers by the motors at both the front and back as the motors move up and down. And this, again, you know, you're bending more carbon, so you're adding stiffness to the mode. And whenever you add stiffness to a mode of vibration, that pushes the frequency up. So we see a benefit here shifting the frequency higher. We go from 145 hertz up to 176 hertz, and that benefit, you know, is going to be felt in your ability to. Uh, move your filter cutoffs. The third pitch mode is really really interesting because this is the one that was pretty much just attenuated out of existence by the addition of the stringers. So before we added the stringers we had this mode here where the motors are moving uh, sort of forward and backward. 
And when we add the stringers, you can see that we still have the same movement, but look at the amount of bending that is going on in that stringer as the motors move forward and backwards. It's being bent into this S shape. And so whenever you're adding this additional stiffness, that's shifting the frequency higher. And in this case, it's just shifting the frequency high enough that it's no longer in that dangerous area where there's a lot of broadband motor noise present in the spectrograph. And when you've not got so much broadband motor noise present in the spectrograph, you won't see so much of a, a sharp peak in the frame resonance. We had the same thing, if you remember, for the peak at 95 hertz before, where it was only a small peak because there wasn't much motor noise there. And we're getting the same benefit here. We're moving out of a region with high motor noise into a region with less motor noise, so we see a lot less of a peak. We're also going to be seeing a lot of damping from the stringers in this mode, because if you think about the, the way the damping is working, as those stringers are being almost twisted, they're going to be moving against the arm. There's going to be rubbing there. There's going to be friction. And that rubbing and that friction is going to dissipate the vibrational energy as heat. And so that adds a lot of attenuation, a lot of damping. So overall, it's not surprising that the addition of the stringers has almost completely eliminated this mode from being something that we need to worry about. It's still there, but it now occurs at such a lower level of energy that the performance of the quad in terms of what the gyro is sensing and what we need to filter out is, uh, is completely changed. And finally, let's look at the spectrograph for the yaw axis. And we can see here a pretty similar story actually to what we saw with that top mode on pitch. We started with a fairly nasty yaw mode actually at 210 hertz. You can see it's quite a large spike. And we can see that adding the stringers in has shifted that up to 245 hertz and also brought it down a lot in, in, a, in its power level, in the amplitude of those vibrations. So let's look at the mode shapes and see what we can see here. Before we added the stringers, you can see we have a uh, you know, very typical yaw mode and the motors are rotating on the arms and the body of the quad is, is turning to the left and to the right in yaw. After we add the stringers, there's really quite a difference in the mode shape. The kind of primary movements are still there, so we've still got the motors twisting uh, on the end of the arms. You can see there's a lot of bending of the stringers going on, and that is adding stiffness to the mode, shifting the frequency higher. But also we can see that there's gonna be a fair amount of damping and attenuation of this mode here as well, because of the, the way that the stringers are being twisted uh, against the arm, they're going to rub against that arm, that friction is going to dissipate energy and it's going to reduce the, the size of the peak. So it makes perfect sense why we're seeing what we're seeing in the spectrograph. Also, and it's hard to see here, the mode shape here has changed a little bit. There's actually now some roll uh, aspect to this mode. So there's a little bit of tilting left and right of the quad as this is happening. And uh, that's why we suddenly see this 245 hertz mode appear on the roll axis as well. There's a little bit of rolling of the quad left and right, which wasn't in the mode shape before, but sometimes when we add an additional component, that mode shape can change and suddenly we have roll involvement where we didn't have roll involvement before. All right, so let's summarize what we've looked at over the course of this video. You can use carbon fiber stringers like this that attach between the, the front arm and the rear arm to affect the resonant performance of your quadcopter frame. The extra stiffness that they add can increase the frequency of certain resonant modes and the extra joints that you get between the carbon fiber, between the carbon fiber stringer and the base of the arm can actually even add a little bit of damping and reduce the amplitude of certain modes. In my next video, I'm going to be looking in, at damping in a lot more detail, specifically in relation to the Impulse RC Apex frame. And we're going to be talking about how the design of that frame and how damping occurring within that frame is responsible for its really good vibration performance. Until then, 
Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting. Huge thank you and huge shout out uh, to my patrons who are helping support me make more videos like this. And I wish all of you happy flying until I see you next time.